The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo from 2011. The American remake. It's based on a book. It's a mystery. Who done it? Um, this movie's very long, uh, which isn't necessarily a problem, but it did drag a bit for me. This movie's well done, but there was just things about it that kind of, kind of, I don't really like. Like just the way that it takes so long. The it was so many little things. Uh, there's some really cool scenes, but there's so many little things that need to be explained, and it just took so long. It was kind of boring for the most part for me, but I do think it was it's a good movie. It's just not really my kind of thing, um, but I did enjoy. There were some scenes that I thought were really good, but the ending just took so long to wrap up. It seemed like it should have ended like four times, and it just kept going, but let's look at uh, the Rotten Tomatoes here. 86% for critic score and 86% for the audience score. Very rarely do you see the scores that close. Um, and let's click on it and see if the average rating changes it at all. I'm sure it does. 86% for the critic score, but a 7.6 average, so that would take it down to about 76%. And 86% taken down to 4.1 out of 5 would take it down to 82 percent so as a general average rating there um i like that about rotten tomatoes it also gives you the average rating if you click on it and i didn't even know that for a while um critics consensus brutal yet captivating the girl with the dragon tattoo is the result of david fincher working at his lurid best with total role commitment from star rooney mara Yes, she is great as the, of course, the girl with the dragon tattoo. And that's part of it. I think I kind of just wanted the whole movie to be about her because her character was way more interesting than Daniel Craig's for me. Um, but that's part of it, right? That you they, they get together and stuff and they're very different people, but they have this, this common, this common goal of trying to solve these these murders, um, which is the basic plot. They're trying to find out, solve this like forty year old murder. It's a big who done it. Um, let's read the movie info. So this is the basic plot from Rotten Tomatoes here. Disgraced financial reporter Mikhail Blomfkist, Daniel Craig finds a chance to redeem his honor after being hired by a wealthy Swedish industrialist, Henrik Wanger, Christopher Plummer, to solve the 40-year-old murder of Wanger's niece, Harriet. Wanger believes that Harriet was killed by a member of his own family, eventually joining Blomkvist on his dangerous quest for the truth, is Lisbeth Selander Rooney Mara, an unusual but ingenious investigator whose fragile trust is not easily won. Yeah, I mean, that's a good sum up. Oh, we have the box office information right here. Um, it doesn't say the budget. So maybe we'll wait till the IMDb to get into it. Let's read some of these reviews, though. Go see the Swedish version. So some people say the Swedish version is better, and that may be the case. In fact, I think I'll keep it on my list, just in case that one ever comes up. And we can watch the other one, too, and see if it's better. Um... But here's a good review. The result is more cohesive and, of course, longer. Though dedicated fans will be annoyed by departures from the books for the sake of brevity. I guess so. I've, I've heard it both ways. I've heard some people say that they, they made the right choices for a movie. You know, they made it more exciting. That the book's more boring. I've heard that. But I'm sure some people like the book more, too. Overall, the movie does take allegiances with both the book and the original movie. But it comes into its own to unravel a truly alluring story. I do like elements of the story, but I just think there's too much. And I was, it was too many moving parts for me to be f completely invested. But mm, I think that's just me. Was it really worth the effort? For all Fincher's famously fanatical control, he can't dispel the stench of half-baked cheese that hangs over the source material. I mean, I guess, like, I don't, I can't really say anything on that, because I haven't seen any of the other iterations, so I don't really know that for sure, but I, like, I could see that being possible. I could not take my eyes off the film 
and never once wanted to exit the theater, all of which are attributes I don't want to diminish or dispute in any way whatsoever. So she was captivated by the movie and it was entertaining to her. And that's fair. I get it. It's a, it's a good story, but there's just elements that bored me in it. And it's so fucking long. And movies can be long and captivating. And this was for some people, but not really for me. Lord of the Rings is one, you know, that I could watch Lord of the Rings. It's really fucking good. It's not boring at all. But, you know, it's all subjective, of course. Let's see some more bad reviews. We've seen, we've seen a couple, had a couple good reviews. Let's have two more good reviews and two more bad reviews. Mara gives a compelling breakout performance as Lisbeth Salander, the goth punk cyber sleuth. Yeah, I mean, she does a good job, uh, I thought, as well. An incredibly well done thriller. All right, those are good reviews. Let's find some. It's hard to find the bad ones. Here's a bad one. The final product. Product. The final product, is a film of stunning craft, if ungainly form, built around a profoundly flawed foundation that even moments of individual brilliance can't fully save. I think I get what they mean because there's just there's parts that maybe don't add up, and there's just so many moving pieces. It's hard to keep track. Um. But that being said, let's find one more bad review and then we can move on to the IMDb page. Larson was a natural heir to Markel's style, but unlike his progenitor's work, I don't know if I said that right, both the book and film versions of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo lack Wallander's good heart. So he's saying basically that it's not as good as the book, I think. Um, which again, I can't really comment, because I don't know. I haven't read the book. Oh, all right. I was like, who redeemed drinking beer? I was like, I did. I'm drinking it right now. <laughs> Let's look at the IMDb page. 7.8. So this movie is generally quite liked, it seems. The popularity has gone down a bit here on IMDb. 7.8 out of 10 is pretty good. Rooney Mara is Elizabeth. Daniel Craig is Mikhail Blomkist. Christopher Plummer as Henrik Wenger. Stellan Skarsgård as Martin Wenger. Who, he's in a bunch of shit. Let's click on him. Oh yeah, he's in Good Will Hunting. Oh yeah, of course, Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia might be one of the things that I actually know him best from. <laughs> But yeah, absolutely. He's in Mamma Mia. And Nymphomaniac Volume 1. And Nymphomaniac Volume 2. I don't know those ones. But he's in them, apparently. Alright. I'm going back to the... The full MDB page here. It's taking a while to load. I don't know why. Okay. And then we skipped all the way back. Okay. We're back on the page. Let's look back at the cast. Is there anybody else? That is noteworthy here. Not really, I don't think. Tony Way. Uh, so let's click on it. He's in other shit. He's in, I've seen him in that Ricky Gervais show, Afterlife. I think that's what it was called. Yeah, he's in that show. Let's see what he's known for. The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo is one of the things he's known for. He's known for the Edge of Edge of Tomorrow, which is actually a pretty good movie uh, with Tom Cruise. Good sci-fi. I like that movie. High Rise. I don't know that one. And The Riot Club. I don't know that one. But he's in that show, Afterlife. Pretty sure about that. Okay. And yeah, back to the cast. One last time to see if there's anyone else that I recognize. And there's not. So let's go down... So the box office information and see if it has the budget. Because Rotten Tomatoes didn't have the budget. But IMDb pulls through with a $90 million budget, which is, you know, decently high. But it grossed $232 million, $617,430. That's crazy. That's, well, that's a success, if I do say so myself. Over double the budge. Well over double the budge. Not so bad. Um, and now we'll get into my notes. I think we shall. Whoever's joining me here and listen to me talk about this shit, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Okay. 
And now, we're not on blood quantum yet. That's the notes that are open, but let's go to the girl with the dragon tattoo, 2011 notes. So it starts off with a bad cover of the immigrant song by Led Zeppelin. And, you know, I get why, but the the cover still could have been better. Like, it's licensing, right, probably, that they couldn't get the real song. But maybe they wanted, like, a a more, like, new-sounding version. But either way, I didn't like it. Uh, moving on. Next note. It looks like a Netflix show intro. This was before Netflix was making the original shows. I think Netflix did exist. At this point. And they maybe did make original shit. 2011. I'm not sure about that. Actually, I'm really curious. Let's just find out. When was the first Netflix original made? 2012. So it was a year after this, actually. Um, but yeah, it's very much like the intro to, like, something like um, Making a Murderer, where there's, like, all these moving pieces. It reminded me very much of a Netflix show opening. Ooh, so I thought that was noteworthy. Let's keep looking here at me notes, in fact. Buys a pack of smokes for one. So this makes sense, but at first I was like, why would you do that? But then, of course, it makes sense. So... Daniel Craig buys a pack of smokes and he just smokes one and throws the rest away. But it's because he doesn't want to, you know, he wants to, he's trying to quit. That's why, of course. At first I was like, why would you waste a pack of smokes? But it's because he's trying to quit. It makes sense. Um, th my next note is, this kind of movie confuses me and does it ever. And it's not really to the movie's fault. It's just with all this, like, quick dialogue and so many moving pieces, so many characters... This shit's hard to follow for me, and definitely not my favorite genre, and parts are boring uh, for me, but yeah, this is definitely not my kind of movie. Oh, I thought I just deleted all the notes by accident, but we didn't. We're good, we're good. Um, but yeah, this kind of movie is just kind of confusing to me, is the bottom line. Um, so yeah, there's a weird cut that I still don't even fully understand. So they cut Elizabeth at one point, and they have, like, a close-up on her eyes, and her eyes look crazy. And I'm just thinking, it's like, did she do drugs? Like, that part wasn't explained to me. It was a weird cut. And I was like, what's going on with her eyes? What happened there? And I, it wasn't really clear to me. So I didn't get that. But uh, moving on. My next note is... Nudity. <laughs> so yeah, there's lots of boob. You see Elizabeth's uh, body naked quite a lot in the movie. Um, and I think you see Ding Dong. You, I don't think you do, actually. They should show Ding Dong, but I don't think they did. You see, I think, male ass as well. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> this isn't that important. I always like to put, bring this up. Especially if Stevie's here, but Stevie's not even here, but I still feel it necessary to discuss the nudity in movies. Okay, my next note is, you feel really bad for Elizabeth. They do a good job of portraying her character and showing that she's been, had a real tough go of things. And she's just trying to like get the money that's hers from her bank account, but the government's not allowing her, so they have to make her work through this parole officer guy. And he's a huge asshole. And he, like, makes her suck his dick to get the money out. And he's a total asshole. And he rapes her. And we obviously want to see him get his comeuppance. And we do, which is the good part. You get to see her revenge on him. But uh, that you feel so bad for her. It's like she's getting fucking shit on so hard in this movie. Right, right off the bat, too. Um, but anyways, moving on. What's Lisbeth asking the tattoo artist about? So there's a part where she she like points at something and is like, "Can we do that?" or something like that. And it's just not clear what she was pointing at. And I rewound it like a couple times, but I still didn't know what the fuck she was talking about. So I was confused at what she was telling the tattoo artist in that scene. 
But moving on, next note. The movie is long and boring at times. I already said this, so we'll just move on. To the next note, which is cat, exclamation mark. Um, yeah, there's a cat in this movie. And... The, spoiler alert, sort of. The cat dies. And usually I like that in a movie because it's they don't usually kill animals in a movie. But it just seemed like... There was no point to it. Like, it just feels like they put it in for the sake of it. And it's like, well, you gotta kill the cat. I don't... I didn't like it in this movie. Um, but sometimes it works to the plot of the movie. But it didn't really add anything for me to this. Um, whether or not that was a part of the source material, I have no idea. But still. My next note is, the hacking looks realistic, I think. And I'm comparing this mainly to the movie Hackers, which is very unrealistic. But it looks like the computers they're using, they were all like Macs at the time. And it, it really looks like she's hacking and it looks legit. It looks more believable than a lot of movies, I feel like. So that part was done well. My next note is, I didn't get that he got shot at first. So there's a part where Mikhail gets shot at. He's in the dark and I guess, like I had to rewind it a couple times, but I think this is what happened. He is by a big wooden pole and the and the... The gun shot the wooden pole and like some of the wood went to into his head. That's what I think happened. I don't know for sure because it was dark and it happened so quickly. But yeah, that's what I think happened. We'll see here. Actually, we won't see, but um, we unless someone tells me. <laughs> Who knows what's up. But until then, I'm just going to say... That I didn't understand that he got shot at first. Moving on. I like how that one guy says T. So there's so many points in the movie. Where Daniel Craig has to interview an old guy. About the murders. And that's these are the parts that just dragged the most for me. I feel like. Because this happened. So many just like scenes of talking. And asking questions. And it's just like, I get that that's sort of the point. They're trying to find out the mystery. I get it, but it's just was a little bit much for me at times. Um, but my next note is one of the guys he asks, he says T in a really funny way. He's like, T? And I don't know. I just, it was really a small note, but I thought that was really funny. The way he, that, I think he's interviewing a Nazi and he says, would you like some tea? And I, I don't know. I like the way he said it. I'm not doing it right, but I like that part. Moving on. There's some intense scenes in this, absolutely. I mean, you got the serial killer, which I'm not going to reveal who it is, because that's part of the the big reveal at the end. But then, you know, you got these the intense scenes with Lizbeth and the parole officer guy, and that's all very sick shit. But there's those parts are entertaining, at least interesting, but there's just too many boring parts. I don't... I didn't really like this movie that much. I might even give it below five. We'll see. But I'm not going to give it that high because I didn't like it that much. I get that it's good, but I didn't li- I didn't like it that much, though. I didn't hate it. I did li- Like I said, I did like some of the more exciting parts, but there's just not enough of that, in my opinion. <laughs> Maybe my attention span is too small, but it is what it is. All right. Let's keep on... Looking up notes, there's only a few left here. I like how she's not reluctant to join Craig. So this is something in movies that's often a trope, and this movie went against that. So I like that. Because there's so many scenes like this in, in different movies where someone's trying to recruit somebody for something, right? So Daniel Craig is trying to recruit Lizbeth for this investigation because he knows that she has the skills. Uh, and usually there'd be, like, a whole part where where she'd say no, and then he'd have to convince her. But no, just the fir- she immediately agrees, and I like that. That was refreshing. All he had to say was that we were looking for a woman killer, and then Lisbeth was like, I'm in, and I like that. Um, but, yeah, moving on. Next note. Why film interview before killing a victim? So this is just something that doesn't make sense to me because it's the... This is the serial killer. And I won't give away who it is, but the serial killer puts Daniel Craig in this chair and and then they're like, okay, 
I'm gonna tell you about everything. This is also such a big trope, right? I'm gonna tell you how I did everything so you know when you escape and you can fucking tell the story. Uh, and it's ridiculous, but at the same time, you're like, okay, I'll go along with that. Oh, but why film the interview? Like, someone can find that later? I don't know. Just little things like that don't make sense to me, but it's fine. You could just argue that, like, it's a part of his cra crazy method, you know? But I don't know. Moving on. Next note. You think it's over, but then it's not. So, so many times. Like, three or four times. You think the movie's coming to an end. But then a bunch of other shit happens. And I was just, like, fucking waiting for this movie to end at this point. I was like, okay, I fucking had enough. There's some really good, intense bits. But then it starts slowing down. Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't love this, as you can tell. Moving on. Next note. Why don't they tell the cops anything? So, so much shit happens. And maybe they do tell the cops, but they don't show us that they tell the cops. So, I have so many questions. Like, I get that, um, that Elizabeth and Mikhail want to solve this mystery and they want to get to the bottom of it themselves. But at a certain point, wouldn't you involve the cops once you know who the fucking bad guys are and maybe get them arrested? Like, I don't know. Some of it doesn't make sense. Like, I get why they don't arrest the the main serial killer, but still, the other people, like Wenstrom, as it comes down, the guy that framed Mikhail at the beginning, you'd think that he would just go to the cops for that. But, I don't know, it's... This, the way the story is told doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but anyway... Moving on. So many things to wrap up. So many loose ends. And I don't even know if they wrap them all up. Who shot Wenstrom? So I still don't understand that. I think Elizabeth has something to do with it. But it's not 100% clear. So I didn't get that. The ending is sad. Because, you know, Elizabeth is like finally happy. She's like, oh, I'm, I'm with Mikhail and things are good. And then she goes to see him at the end of the movie. And he's with the other woman, and it's sad. And it's like, oh, Elizabeth can't catch a fucking break. Uh, so yeah, sad ending. There was some good bits, but this movie was fucking boring, man. I'm sorry if you like it, and I get that there's some really intense and cool bits. I agree, but it just wasn't enough to save it for me. I yeah, I might even give it below five. That's how angry I am at this movie. Um, even though, it, again, it's not a bad movie. I just didn't like it. That's what it comes down to. Um, I have to be honest. But yeah, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. I'm giving it like a 4.8. It just... I disliked it more than I liked it. Even though I did like parts of it. So we're giving it a fail. Just barely, but still... The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo 2011, 4.8 out of 10 ducks.